Hey, Historical Geology, welcome to arguably your hardest lab of the entire semester. Um, so if you're watching this video, then hopefully you've already completed your pre-lab assignment and you have all the correct answers at this point to the facies that we're going to be looking at. So last week you looked at letters a through Z and you use your facies chart to figure out the depositional environment for each of these rock layers and what you'll see is when you start to open up these three correlations that you're going to do is you have this column here labeled facies and in these facies in this facies column are a bunch of letters that correlate to the environments that you described last week that you determine their depositional environment for. So you're going to want to open up that assignment. And the first thing you're going to do is go through these. There's three correlations. This is correlation one that I just grabbed to show you how you start. Um, you're going to transfer the environments that you learned that you identified with each of these letters and just write right next to um, each one of these letters what the environment of deposition was. So um, I'm going to do that on this correlation so you can kind of see how it works. So for example, letter U down here last week you determined was a submarine fan. And the same thing with letter V was a submarine fan. Layer Y was a braided river. So you kind of go through and right next to the letters you write in their depositional environment. So that's the first thing you do. Um, I want to introduce you to the next couple columns too. So this is this first column is the facies, which you figured out in your pre-lab. Um, the second column is the geologic period that we're investigating. And in this case, we're looking at the Ordovician, Silurian, and part of the Devonian period in areas around Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Um, all of these periods, which are in the Phanerozoic Eon, can be subdivided into series and so you can see that the Ordovician series or the Ordovician period is divided into the Cincinnati series that you can see in location two and the Silurian period you can see in location two is divided into the Albion series the Niagara series and the Cayugan series and you can see that the Devonian period isn't really subdivided in this area and then sort of next, these series can be subdivided into stages. So the Cincinnatian series within the Ordovician period can be divided into the Edenian st stage, the Mayvillian stage, and the Richmondian stage. And these are the rocks that were deposited at location two during the Ordovician period, Cincinnati series, Richmondian stage. And during that time period, there was a river at location two. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and write in all the environments. You're just transferring this over from your pre-lab. So we've correlated rock layers. In this lab, we're really going to correlate environments for all three of our correlations. So what I'm going to have you do is do the correlations and first you're going to correlate environments, then you're going to cor correlate time later. But the first thing you're going to do is correlate the environments. So what you'll see here is in location two, we start from the bottom because of superposition. You can see all the way up until the end of, of V here, there is a submarine fan present. And then if we look at location one, which is right here, you can see that that submarine fan is present till right till where it gets to Y. So we're going to correlate across those submarine fans, we're connecting our submarine fans. And so again, I give you the answers to this correlation, so this isn't super crazy, but I want you to try it yourself for sure, um, and then kind of compare it. So you can see I correlated my submarine fans in location one to my submarine fans in location two. The next thing you'll see that I did is that I actually grouped all of my rivers together because rivers are super dynamic environments and it's super reasonable to think that a braided river, um, the load of sediment in that braided river might decrease and then it just becomes what will look like a regular old river. Um, and so I group all of my rivers together typically and I connect the, the these like series of rivers here to the ri river in location too. Um, another very typical transition that you see is laterally 
from a beach, as you swim further out shore, eventually you can hit a coral reef once all the sand has been deposited. So this is something you haven't seen yet. There are a couple locations that might be sort of right next to each other, environments that might be right next to each other. And we do this just general squiggly line. In fact, you can see that there's four of them here and they're called facies changes. Facies changes means that like if you were standing at a beach laterally and you walked out, like it would be reasonable to assume that a coral reef was there. Um, Similarly, if you were on a tidal flat, which is very shallow water and you walked out into deeper water, that would transition into a shelf. Um, So you don't necessarily know at this point where your source areas are, but you can do this sort of squiggly line to indicate that there is a lateral facies change. I'll, I'll get more into that at the very end of this um, video. So, but anyway, facies changes are legal moves in correlation. Um, I deleted the sea level curve from this particular um, slide just so that I could get all my text in here. But correlation one also has a sea level curve. You're going to complete that just the way you've been doing um, throughout chapter 5b and on previous um, assignments. So you should be good there. So the next thing you're going to do after that is you are going to correlate what are called chronostratigraphic lines. So in your so you can do this a couple of ways um, some people because you're doing this on PowerPoint and you're not doing this on paper it might be easier for you to have one set of correlations that just show your correlations of environments and then a second set of correlations that just show your correlations of time which is what chronostratigraphic lines connect they connect points of the same time across um, our locations um, or you can do it all on the same one. But either way, if you do it all on the same sets of um, of stratigraphic sections, if you do correlation of environments and correlation of time on the same set, make sure that you do um, correlation of environments first. I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's talk about correlation of time. That's where we're going to use these other columns here. So right here, is in the Ordovician when the Trentonian stage ends. And right here in the Ordovician is also where the Trentonian stage ends. So what we're gonna do is connect those lines. Chronostratigraphic lines just connect points that are the same in time. And this is gonna take you about two minutes because here you have the end of the Edenian which connects to the end of the Edenian here. Um, the end of the Maysvillian here was gonna connect across to the end of the Maysvillian here. So you'll do that. Um, and again, you can do these on the same sl uh, the same slides as your environmental correlation or different ones. Um, if you do it all in the same one, it'll look like this. So I encourage you to at least make your chronostratigraphic lines a different color because you can see that they will cross, um, which is fine because they're correlating different things. But regardless, first go through and correlate your environments. Next, go through correlate your time. Um, and then you can actually check your work. I gave you a file called Strat Section Answers. Go through and make sure that what you have broadly agrees with what I have. It doesn't have to be the same. There is, in fact, no perfect right answer um, that you can infer from just looking at strat columns and just reading rock layer descriptions. Um, but go through and, and compare. So remember, in the very first slide, we looked at a strat column from location one and location two. This next part shows you where those locations actually are. So in Pennsylvania, that's where location one is. In southeastern Ohio, that's where location is two is, three, four, five, and six. So you'll find three through six on correlations two and three. Um, and just so that there is no question. Let me show you that um, this is going to be replaced with the video that I'm making right now. This is where you get your three correlations in this file right here. Here are the answer, the answer keys to this. Um, and from here on out, I'm going to be talking about stuff that you can find in file three. And next week, you're going to submit your materials in number four in the Dropbox. There's nothing you actually have to hand in this week. You just have to go through your correlations and go through um, your environments, which I'm going to talk about next. So <clears throat> what you're going to do when you download the, let me see if I have it right here, 
the base and analysis lab is that this file is going to download. So at this point, you've all, you will already have done your lithologic correlation, you've already done your sea level curve, and you've already done your chronostratigraphic correlation. So these are just directions that I'm reiterating in this video because I think it's a little bit more understandable. But if you want to go through and read, there they are. The next thing you're going to do is parts four and five. So part four asks you to look at some of these maps on the next couple pages. Um, and when you do that, you will see, this is what you'll see on the next couple pages. You'll see the Ordovician Trentonian map time slice. Um, you'll see the Ordovician Richmondian time slice, and then you will see the Silurian Cayugan time slice. So we're basically gonna be looking at these same three places um, in three of the time slices, even though we could do many more than three, but three will get the job done, I think. So we're gonna try that. Um, so that's where you're gonna get these maps. And then what you're gonna do, so look at the age here. This is the Ordovician Trentonian, and we're gonna be looking at locations one and two. So if we go back here, whoops. Okay. Um, at location one in the Ordovician Trentonian, Ordovician Trentonian, right? Location one was a submarine fan, and location two, we get two right here, two, we go down to the Trentonian, that was also a submarine fan. So when we get here, what we do then is we write in by each of these locations, so one was a submarine fan, right, and two was a submarine fan, we write in each of those locations what we th believed the depositional environment to be. So this kind of gives you a spatial idea. This is actually called a fence diagram. It gives you a spatial idea of how environments um, varied over distance. And then what you start to do is look at these things and say, okay, so if the fans were here, so that means we're going from shallow water into deep water, and then you see the deep water here, that has to tell us that the source for the sediment in this environment has to be somewhere in this general direction because the water seems to be getting deeper as we move here. Okay, so why would we care at all about that? We so we're gonna do that for our three time slices in that basin analysis lab. And then we're gonna look and say, okay, let's see what we can figure out happened to sea level based on the locations that we have and the data that we have. And then let's look back in our book and figure out what was going on in the world in North America during the Silurian, Ordovician, and Devonian periods. Um, can we see any of those big tectonic changes? Can we see those reflected in our in our strat columns and in our sea level curve and in the rock layers we see deposited? Are any of those global trends that we see reflected locally? Um, and what we're gonna do, what you're going to do with this is in your basin analysis lab, there is on the slide two, there is part five, and this is what you're gonna hand in. You are going to write a geologic history of the Central Appalachian Basin for the time period that is represented. It's um, dense, it is not a fun read, it should not be a fun read, um, and it's just one to two pages unless you get a little crazy and hit the third page. But what you're going to do is write a little introduction. You're going to go through and find in the early Paleozoic chapters of your textbook um, what are some of the tectonic events happening in eastern Laurentia, which is um, North America. What it, what's going on at that period of time in the early Paleozoic. And then part B is where you pull things directly from your um, from your strat columns and from the environments that you on those maps that you just would have filled out. And you're going to write two to five sentences about the geologic history of these three time slices. So these were the three maps that you filled out. The Ordovician Trentonian, the Ordovician Richmondian, and the Silurian Cayugan. And go through and say in each of those sections, and you're going to do a little subheading for each of the sections, you're going to write about uh, where do you think the source area or the provenance was during that time period? And what's your evidence for the location of the source area? What rocks are present? What environments are present? 
Um, does this show you a transgression or a regression? Is that correlated with what you found on your C-level curve at that point? Um, so what you're going to try to do in your summary and conclusion is say, all right, these are the big events I know was going on. Here's what I see locally. If I see those big events affect, uh, like reflected locally, cool, then write that. Um, if you don't see the big events that we're talking about reflected locally, then that's okay too. Write that in. Um, but this is what you're going to hand in. And this particular part is not due this week. It's actually due next week. And so I think that would be due March 27th. What you're going to hand in is the file that this file actually right here that has these three maps on them. And then you're going to attach your write up to that. And you're going to do that in right here. So here is where you're going to attach your environments and your write-up from the Basin Analysis Lab. Um, so really what I want you to do is kind of take a deep breath and take this step by step because it will take you a while. Um, in fact, just to get ready for the write-up, like so parts two and three, it, that should take you um, that should take you three hours. It should take you three hours um, because labs are supposed to take three hours. And then afterwards, this write up that might take you an hour or two too. Um, this write up isn't again due for another week though, so you have a little bit of time. Um, and this is I want you to know the hardest. Like I said in the beginning of this, this is the hardest lab of the semester. You are gonna get through this, and everything is gonna be great. And um, you're gonna hopefully be able to draw some connections between some of the bigger concepts we've been talking about and then some of the smaller fine details that we can see in strat columns. And of course, I will be here to answer questions when you have them. Good luck. Yep, so I messed up. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Once you get all this business done, um, I just wanted to give you this these couple hints um, for when you are actually doing the lab and doing the correlation. So the first thing is to combine um, similar environments. And to some extent, I made you do that when you're doing your pre-lab. So you can, can combine all riverine environments and just treat them as rivers in general. So when you were doing your pre-lab, I had you include alluvial plain, which is just a flood plain, with your meandering river channel, with your delta. And in this, for this case, you can also include your braided river in as well. Um, one of the things you're going to find is that lagoons and tidal flats are virtually interchangeable. They're very challenging to tell the difference between um, in the geologic records. So you can just, you can treat them all as the same thing. Um, when you are correlating. Uh, finally, the facies change. Let me talk to you about the concept of the facies change. So here are two strat columns. You have sandstone here overlain by shale and limestone. And this sandstone is overlain by dolostone and then limestone. So your correlation seems like relatively easy, right? Except that you have this middle section that doesn't make any kind of sense. So maybe you have your correlation of your sandstone to sandstone, your limestone to limestone, and then in the middle you have shale to dolostone, which we've often equated to, to limestone a little bit here. So here where there's nothing, like you can't do a double pinch up. Double pinch outs do not exist. But what you can do here is this facies change, and that's all that um, illustrates. Uh, the final little bit of hint is that whenever you have a beach, or not whenever, but beaches can very routinely facies change into reefs. So when you see like a coral reef and you'll see that in, um, in reefs and also sometimes in tidal flats, but I think I had to call them all reefs. Um, you can definitely do a facies change between a beach on one side and a reef on another. Um, and that's because reefs generally only form in environments where there is no sediment any longer being deposited. So now I swear it's really done. This video is really done now. <laughs>